So the mag, uh, mag release works freaking fantastic. When the mag comes out, this is your empty indicator. still able to provide full voltage to the motor so that you, so that you can maintain that consistent velocity and accuracy AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, HN Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. All right, guys, this is the new Barra 400E fully automatic, all electronic. BB gun. <laughs> There's a tiny hole. Today I'm going to give you an overview of it, then we're going to dive deep into the tech of how it works, then I'll run you end to end through the gun and share with you everything that it is that I've learned about it so far. We'll do accuracy testing at 30 and 45 feet, we'll dive into some crony data, I will get into batteries and charging and teach you all about that, and we'll even do some penetration testing. But before we get too deep into this, I wanted to let you guys know, in a second video, we're gonna have Jacob and Gio, the company's owner and engineer, come back to get all your guys' questions answered. We'll do it like in a Skype format where we've got everybody on the screen together. And then I'll get into the comment section of this video and we'll pull every single comment and question that you guys have and we'll make sure to address it with those guys. So please get out something to take some notes with, leave your questions and comments down below for those guys. And maybe after this one's, this video is run for 30 or so days, we'll do that one and, and uh, get you guys taken care of there. Also, before we start, uh, Pyramid Air sponsored uh, the 38,000 BBs that they've sent me. So for a coupon code, uh, if you guys want to save $5 off of $50 or more, please hit them up. And the coupon code is AEAC5. And I'll put that up on the screen here for you all. Okay, so the Barra 400E. Guys, this is the world's very first and only fully automatic all-electric BB gun. It's basically airsoft tech on steroids. Now, the parent company is called Moab Ventures, and they actually own Barra Air Guns, which is an air gun company that has a lot of different air guns under its umbrella. And they also own Black Ops USA, which is an airsoft company, which has a lot of airsoft guns available under its umbrella. So basically what they did is they took all of that goodness and tech from airsoft, and they moved it over into the air gun industry to give the traditional CO2 powered BB gun, a, uh, a challenge and, and a run for its money. But a basic overview of the gun is this. You're in the $400 price point. The gun measures 32 to 35 and a half inches long, depending on how you have the adjustable buttstock configured and it weighs seven pounds, nine ounces, as you see it here, minus the aftermarket Hawk reflex uh, sight I've got up here on the top, and we'll get into that too. All right, so tech. So as I mentioned, what, uh, what Barra did is they basically took their airsoft gun and they beefed up all of the internal components so that it could handle the stresses of a five to six grain steel BB, and they incorporated it here into the Barra 400. Now, the way I want you guys to think of this is a lot of you guys are air gunners, I know, and picture uh, the, uh, your brake barrel air gun, basically where when you cock it, you're compressing a piston, there's an air chamber in there, 
you, you pull the trigger, the, the piston is released, the spring pushes that piston forward, compresses that air in the air cham chamber through a little tiny hole, and, um, and pushes that pellet down range. Well, this is the basically the same technology. Nice. There's an air chamber in here. There's a, there's a reciprocating piston. And the way it basically works is that reciprocating piston has, um, is ratcheted on the bottom. There's an electric motor in here. There's a gearbox that gets the speed right between the electric motor and that ratchet on the bottom of that, of that piston. And, and there's a pinion gear, which is toothed on only one half of the gear. So as that gear is rotating, it's grabbing that reciprocating piston. It's pulling it back. It's letting it go. It's pulling it back. It's letting it go. And each time that piston comes back and gets let in and gets let go, it, uh, it flies through an air chamber, it compresses the air in that chamber, and it pushes that air out of a little bit of a, a little aperture right at the, uh, right at the, t -t 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 <laughs> sorry guys, I'm excited, right at the top of the aperture here, sending that BB um, down range. So there's no point in here where there's anything actually colliding with a BB. And, uh, and that's basically the tech. Uh, the advantage to you guys there is that um, is you're going to get the longevity because uh, parts aren't going to be wearing out. They've, uh, they've literally tested this gun with like millions and millions and millions of shots through them. And, uh, and they've held up very well. In the two weeks that I've spent with it, I've put it through hell, tested a bunch of different types of ammo with it in brutal 100 degree Florida heat and humidity. And, uh, and the gun's held up fine and it's performed very well too. And uh, here, I'll give you guys a little bit of a listen here. So you can hear that electric motor running through the gearbox, turning that half tooth pinion, grabbing that little, that little piston and moving it back and forth. Now the piston is made of steel and it is coated in poly. I did wanna share that with you too. And um, that's the basic tech guys of how this work. it's, works. It's battery operated. Um, you're going to get over a thousand good shots, and by good, I mean consistent velocity. I mean consistent velocity. I don't know if a CO2 powered gun can do this, guys. Hey, for those of you that do have good experience with CO2 powered fully automatic BB guns, I would love to hear from you in the comments below when it comes to a pressure drop, how weather affects that. If you get into rapid fire, how many shots you're getting before you know, you see that kind of tail tail off, you know, from, from the, the temperature changes and all that sort of thing inside the gun. Um, I would love to hear from you guys so that you can, uh, you can teach me. But uh, let me put my select fire switch here back onto, uh, back onto safe. Okay, now let me run you end to end through the gun and sort of share with you everything that I've learned about it, um, you know, over the course of my two week journey and try to relay that best as best I can. So starting up on the front here, this is a, this is a moderator. Um, it's for looks. The barrel actually extends right up to about here. So it runs almost all the way through the moderator. It's a smooth bore steel, you know, BB, BB barrel. This moderator is very easily removable. It just unscrews, but it's kind of opposite of what you might be accustomed to. Um, right or clock, clockwise will unscrew it and counterclockwise we'll screw it back on and, and tighten it. And I'll have some pictures up here on the screen so you guys can see what that looks like. So interesting, on that $400 price point that we touched on, there is a ton of steel inside this gun, guys. So basically this, uh, this whole forward uh, forearm up here, this is all CNC machined aluminum. The, uh, the entire lower that you see here, this is all CNC. Uh, uh, aluminum. The buffer tube is some kind of steel, as is the locker ring, locking ring. So this is a super rigid type of deal. It doesn't feel mamby pamby flimsy poly, like I'm guessing maybe some of the other uh, um, competing brands out there feels like. And even the magazines are metal. So.
think it's dead. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it feels substantial in the hands. And like I said, you're seven pounds, nine ounces when you're carrying it around. So it doesn't feel too far off of the weight of, uh, you know, a traditional AR. Okay. Now, uh, machined into the side of this receiver are actually uh, M-locks. So, and this is licensed with M-locks. So you can use your flashlights, your lasers, your, uh, your sling stud attachments, anything that's designed for M-lock, you can slap that on the side here and uh, you're good to go. Up on top is a CNC machined aluminum weaver. So you can add stuff up here as well. So there's a lot of good going on here up in the front of the gun and it, and it feels really good in, uh, in the hands. It's, um, it's edgy, you know, kind of like an AR would be, but not like overly, you know, not overly so. It just feels right. It's narrow, it's thin, and it feels tough. And, and there, is, there is zero flex in this, guys. You're probably... Uh, yeah, yeah, club a uh, club a burglar with this and and do just as <laughs> just do do just as well. Woo! <laughs> oh shit! You got to. Oh. Okay, so something that's uh, really nice is the gun also comes with two flip up weaver sights. Here's the forward one, here's the back one. Now they're in the down position here and even when they're in the down position, you guys have, uh, our Barra has put backups, incorporated backup sights into the design. So there's a fiber optic tube up here, there's a fiber optic coil back in here. And um, and they actually, they're they're bright. The only, uh, and they work great out on the range and I, and I was using them for almost like a precision type of shooting get a little bit lower on the gun. Um, it lines things up better than, than, uh, than the flip up sights, which will get things, it lines up, it lines up your target more precisely than the flip up sights. And they're really good in low light conditions because they'll grab all the available light and, and, uh, and you know, so that you can basically, um, basically see it better. The one thing about them is they're so low in order to get your eye lined up with them, you're going to have to have the butt pad really high up on your shoulder and your cheekbones going to be your upper cheekbones really got to be kind of mashed down into here so there it is there's the lineup right about there so just you know something to be aware of you bigger guys that might be a, a challenge with if you have like a big head <laughs> all right excuse me um up on the top here uh, i reached out to hawk optics and i asked them for uh, some kind of red dot or reflex and they sent me this this is their I believe they call it the reflex dot wide or the wide dot reflex. I'll take a picture of the box and put it up on the screen for you guys. You're in about the $180 price point here. This is a firearm rated reflex dot. So um, you can use it on your shotguns. You can, it's small enough. You could probably, nah, I don't know if you could use it on a handgun. I, I'm going to say no, but you can use it on all sorts of different stuff. And if, uh, so you can buy it and kind of multi-purpose the tool. But um, for 180 bucks, you get a lot. Uh, it's a 3 MOA sight. It's a 25 layer coated optic. Um, it is adjustable for brightness. Eight different positions. There's a little plus minus over on the uh, left side. Uh, you hold the plus to turn it on. You hold the minus to turn it off. And as you bang plus and minus up and down there, you've got uh, eight different levels of brightness. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's Weaver. And, uh, and the windage and elevation, uh, the windage and elevation adjustments responded wonderfully for me uh, throughout my uh, throughout my time sighting it in for the different BBs to do the accuracy work. <laughs> that uh, that we're going to get into, and it even has a um, an automatic standby or timeout where there's like a, um, a motion sensor in here, and if it doesn't sense any motion or vibration for five minutes, it'll turn the light off for you automatically. Um, it's not a shake awake like the Hollis Suns where you pick it up and it comes back on, but it's more of a battery saver. And the battery just, I think it's a CR2032, if I'm not mistaken, double check me. The, um, the battery kind of sits over, uh, there's a little tray here that pops out and you can slide it, slide it in there. This was awesome. Um, even you know, reflex sights aren't the greatest thing for precision accuracy, but in fully automatic mode at 30 feet, it was good enough to do stuff like that, where it's putting 50 BBs uh, inside of an inch, no, uh, no problem. 
But um, if you want to get even more precise, I would recommend not a reflex, a reflex, but a dot, or a scope that does, uh, or a reflex sight that does a dot and or, you know, that, uh, that MOA reflex circle. But uh, yeah, nice piece, guys. Um, thanks, Hawk, for sending that to me for, uh, for these guys to, uh, to see in this review. Um, uh, so that second sight is back here. Here's what they look like popped up. You have an aperture post up here at the front. Uh, you have one reticle style here in the back, um, and it's just a, it's a peep sight. And basically, you line up the post in the middle of the peep, and you're good to go. It's good enough to hit soda cans, but I don't think I don't foresee you hitting soda cans at 30 and 45 feet. But I don't see you guys being able to do super good precision work with this type of thing. Um, maybe if you're better than I am, which is very likely, because I am not a BB gun guy. I'm more of like a, an adult air gun guy. This is my first. Um, uh, first time really spending a lot of time getting to know BB, if you will. <laughs> but um, um, but they're fine. This one's adjustable for um, windage. This little clockwise knob here turns left and right. Um, yeah, it's got clicks. No, it doesn't. That's just the that's just the molding on the plastic. But uh, it's got a left-right adjustment uh, here on the back, okay? All right, running down the back here. So um, the gun does have a charging handle, all right? The charging handle is purely for looks, all right? You do not need to cycle the, 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 the handle in order to get the gun to fire, okay? Uh, you'll see me doing it throughout the video because I'm an AR guy. I, I shoot a lot of AR and AK, and, and a lot of this stuff was just autopilot for me, um, especially out there in the 100-degree heat. I was kind of using that, that primal part of my brain, and the rest of it, I think, was shut down just to keep me alive. But um, one thing it does do is when you cycle the gun with the, uh, the charging handle, it will drop the dust cover, which is metal, by the way. And this is what that looks like. Come on, there it goes. And um, it's even got like a steel bolt in here. And when I pull the, the charging handle back, you'll see, that, you'll see that steel bolt move a little bit. There it goes. And again, that's just for fun, that's just for show. When I pull that back and look in there, you really don't see anything. It's not like you can pull it back, run a cleaning patch through, or, um, or anything like that. But um, also, this gun will fire with the dust cover closed. So it fires with it closed, open. Again, guys, all of that is just for looks and, uh, and, um, and just for fun. All right, Continue, continuing on afterwards. Um, steel buffer tube, steel locking ring, all good stuff. A six-way adjustable um, buttstock. Like I said, 32 inches to 35 and a half. And uh, it's rigid. It's super rigid. And this uh, cheek piece moves the same, moves with the same amount that my AR cheek pieces would, which is a little bit side to side, very little up and down. I know you guys are probably, here's what this looks like, by the way. Little tactile clicks all the way through here. Um, I know you're probably wondering, well, if I have ARs, can I switch my, can I take like my mission first tactical stock off of that and put it on here? You could, but the challenge is there's no way to, uh, there's nowhere to house the battery and the battery is housed right back in here. And I'll get into that when I get into batteries and, uh, and charging with you guys. All right. Um, same thing for the handle. It's an AR handle but uh, the motor and gearbox is housed in here so you can't swap this out so this is the gear that you that you're going to own for the life, foreseeable lifetime of this gun um, unless so kind of circling back to moab ventures and bara air guns and black ops usa everything on this gun should be compatible with airsoft tech so if you can find aftermarket airsoft tech to switch out your stock and handle that will probably work and that should be a good question for you guys to put down in the comments for a uh, for Jacob and Geo um, for the for our sequential video. All right. 
Super cool on the back here, guys. Um, ambidextrous, ambidextrous. It's, it's not ambidextrous, it's ambidextrous. It's a tough one, I always struggle with that. Um, ambidextrous QD sling mount uh, attachments. Look at this, guys. So there's one on that side, one on this side. This was a lifesaver. I use this throughout my testing so that when I'm doing cameras and resetting up soda cans to disintegrate, you know, I'm uh, you're just letting that gun hang and that's it's nice to get that seven and a half pounds, uh, seven and a half pounds off you. There's even a, um, a built-in uh, um, receiver for a, a sling right here. So you can use your M-Locks up here and, and put a, a, another sling attachment, and, and you're good for a, a, a two-point sling as well. Just super, super well thought out, and I can't overemphasize how good this thing feels in the hands and how good it's, uh, its quality, uh, um, its initial quality. You know, like I'm, I ain't doing a long-term review or nothing. I blasted the hell out of it for a couple of weeks. But it was great for me. This is a good company, so I would expect good things. Warranty is one year, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. Double check me on that. Okay, um, rounding back around the uh, select fire switch. So <clears throat> the select fire switch is also ambidextrous. There's that side, there's that side ambidextrous. Hopefully I got it right that time. Forward is safe. So if it's in the forward position, nothing's happening when I, um, when I squeeze that trigger. Um, when I move it into the upward position, now I'm in semi-automatic mode. And each time I pull the trigger, I'm going to get a shot. Okay. All the way to the back is fully automatic mode. And as long as I have that trigger depressed, Okay, it's going to fire the gun. Now, you guys are seeing me dry fire this gun so that I can have a good video for you so that you can learn the gun. The engineer has told me that dry firing this gun is not particularly good for it, right? That being said, they have a dry fire tests set up in their labs where they've been dry firing the tar out of these things for like millions of shots and haven't been able to break one. So the message I got from, from them was a little bit conflicting. In the one hand, they're like, yeah, it's not real good for it. In the other hand, they're like, but we haven't been able to break one and we've literally do it like millions of times every day. So if you own this, you know, don't let your kids run around just -na 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 or whatever. It's just not good for it, especially at this price point. This is more of an adult toy rather than like a kid toy. That being said, guys, I think the kids would have a lot of fun with this under your supervision. This thing is an absolute blast. And even for a 47 year old, I had a really hard time not laughing like a little girl when I was doing my filming. Cause honestly, it took me back to being a little, a little kid running through my little Crossman uh, pellet CO2 guns as fast as I can. And my cap guns as fast as I can, you know, playing fully automatic. So <laughs> this thing, um, you know, so there's that. Okay, um, I also want to mention something that kind of took me by surprise with the select fire switch was this. So uh, forward position safe works fine. Now you'll hear this this tactile click as I move up into semi-auto. It's very quiet. There it is. Okay. Now I'm in semi-automato. Semi-automato. Semi-automatic. What took me by surprise is kind of that 45 degree between the two, the gun goes off, all right, even before I've come up here. And it also caught me by surprise a couple of times where I thought I was in fully automatic mode, but I hadn't knocked it quite all the way there. I kind of knocked it to that 45, and you're going to hear that thing. It's going to be an automatic even though it hasn't. So that's more of something um, if you, you know, just be aware of it. For so that you guys can be safe. Also, guys, this is a BB gun. If you're shooting at a target that has the slightest chance of ricocheting, got me at least <laughs> wear some kind of you know good 
uh, intended for this purpose uh, uh, eyeglasses and, and maybe you keep your lips together too so you don't shatter any teeth I did have one pellet come or one BB come back at like 45 feet and uh, smack me right here in the uh, in the abdomen and it, I felt it it was a little bit of a sting so they're coming back with some energy where you wouldn't want it like in the teeth or the eyes or any uh, any place sensitive okay um, so the magazine release is also ambidextrous and it's right up here on the side. I can't tell if that's poly or metal. It feels like poly. So metal, metal, metal. Up here, this top part is poly. Okay, so your weaver up here is metal. Your weaver back here is like what you're going to see from like Magpul poly or Glock. You know, it's that same tough poly composite. But anyway, so the mag, uh, mag release works freaking fantastic when the mag comes out this is your empty indicator and we'll get all into all this in a second if you're going to put this back in the gun guys just push that down till it clicks so that everything goes in there and there's a little hopper up in here that holds like three or four bbs or something like that and that doesn't line up well in there unless it's in there and then pops out and then it can shoot up into that hopper fine if you try to jam it in there when it's sticking uh, sticking up you can I've noticed it doesn't want to go in, so that tells me those guys aren't aligning perfectly well. So the mag release works awesome, okay? There's another one over here on the port side of the gun, and, um, <clears throat> and it's right here. There it is. You see that kind of lift up, okay? This up here, the, uh, the bolt hold open or, or, um, or uh, whatever the heck they call this, I forget. It's very early in the morning here and today in Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, this is also just for looks. This does absolutely nothing, okay? But you do have an Ambi uh, mag release, which I thought was super cool. So, um, and the cheek piece, or the buttstock is also Ambi. It's got this little 45 degree angle coming down above. This gun is just Ambi everywhere. So you southpaws should uh, should not have any, uh, any challenges with it. Um, I'm just looking it over because I want to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Uh, yeah, I forgot something. Something pretty darn important. The trigger. Now, the trigger is a single stage. It basically feels long and mushy, but light. And it has a nice, resettable, tactile, clicky feedback. And overall, it kind of feels electronic in nature, if that makes sense. It feels servo-driven and is a far departure from like a dual stage match trigger. But that all being said, um, I have no beefs with it. Uh, it's poly, it has a nice wide grippable blade. It's got a good uh, good shape to it. And um, it, it wasn't something that detracted at all from my time with the gun. And I really have no complaints about it for what this is. But uh, putting it on the gauge, get us into a, wait, that's safe. Let me get us into semi-automatic mode. Ugh. And here we go. Two pounds, 10 ounces. So it's basically a two and a half pound deal. And here's what it looks like. There's the pull. And forward, 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 forward. And I'll shut up so you can hear it. There's the, uh, there's the reset. Pull. Reset. Now, if I pull slowly, you'll see all that creep. And then at about two and a half pounds, it just goes off. So, uh, yeah, that's the trigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a pretty good end to end. All right, let's get into the next fun part, accuracy. So, I, I, I've had a very small amount of experience with BB guns. I had my Crossman 1077 10 pump growing up. So I'm kind of familiar with BB accuracy from that. Uh, at 30 and 45 feet, it was traditionally not great. Um, <clears throat> and I shot an Umarex Ebos three or four years ago. Maybe it was something like five years ago. I can't remember what it was for. And the accuracy was, of that was okay. This, I have to say, guys, I was kind of blown away with how good the accuracy was. Uh, even in fully automatic mode, just making sure I'm back in safe here. <laughs> All right, so I did uh, fully automatic mode accuracy testing 
with all these different types of BBs over here at 30 and 45 feet, okay? And I just realized I, I said something that's gonna be like a, um, a little bit of a, a quicksand for you guys. Not all of these BBs. Don't use copper plated BBs in this gun. Don't use frangible BBs in this gun, okay? That was per the engineer Geo. So from Geo to me to you, the copper ones, sometimes they're not sized properly and they won't feed and they can get jammed in the barrel. Avoid them. Just go to the steel or the black coated steel or the zinc or whatever. Just stay away from, from the gold stuff. And these frangible ones can come apart in the gun. There's that much power here. I think they advertise 380 to 410 feet per second. And like I said, you're going to run that very consistently throughout the thousand shot battery. So this thing can hammer some BBs, all right? So don't be putting in any, a BB in here that can fly apart. Okay, but yeah, um, super, uh, super impressed with the accuracy. Let's do the 30 first, all right? Um, yeah, let's do it like this. <clears throat> okay. Um, basically, as I mentioned, I went through all of this type of ammo, okay? I came away learning that in my particular gun, don't know if this is going to apply to all bar 400s, because with air guns, barrels are not made, all made the same, but I'd love to hear your guys' comments down below who have this gun. But um, I found the uh, the Crossman Black Widow, the Air Venturi Steel, and the Umarek Steel to be the most accurate BBs in this gun, okay? These guys over here, the Daisy, the Daisy Match, and these um, Hornady BBs, these were not great. They were good, but out of that 50 round cartridge i'd get probably 10 to 15 percent of them that are like doing knuckleballs and so something wasn't driving there where it just it just didn't really like the gun that much interestingly from the daisy to the uh, daisy match zero difference in accuracy results at 30 and 45 feet and these hornadies i'm sad to say in this gun were just terrible. This was Shotgun City. It did this barrel did not like this uh, this BB for whatever reason, and um, yeah, it's just unfortunate. But that's the way it goes. Your gun might like them, so I would encourage you to try them. That's uh, that's air guns, but that's kind of the overview of the uh, ammo here. I will also say, and we'll get into this in a min minute. I'm going to show you how the speed loader works as well as the magazine, as well as loading the magazine. Um, the easiest loading BB by far um, through this speed loader and into the magazine were these Crossman Black Widows. I have no idea why. Maybe Geo knows why. Maybe one of you guys should put that in the comments down below right now before we forget so that he gets that question when we circle back and we do our Skype video. Um, and, and I'll get into detail of, of kind of like why I think that may be when I show you this stuff here in a moment. But anyway, here's the Crossman Black Widow, fully automatic. Um, put 50 rounds in the mag, held it as steady as I could, and let it rip at 30 feet until it started dry firing. And all of these BBs, except for like two or three, landed inside of an inch at 30 feet and fully automatic mode. Thought that was very impressive, okay? Um, almost equally as impressive was the Air Venturi Steel. Same thing, 30 feet, fully automatic, held the gun as still as I could, and all of these except like, I don't know, there's an outlier there, there's one there, except like what, four? Again, landed inside of an inch at, uh, at 30 feet, so. I was surprised by that. You know, again, I, I want to hear from you guys, your experience with some of these other guns, because I would imagine there's some of you guys who own a lot of these CO2 powered guns and, uh, and are kind of eyeballing this, man, 400 bucks, should I do that? Is it worth it? What am I going to get for my money? I'd be curious to hear, hear your results, okay? Um, the Umarex Steel, again, let her rip, 30 feet, full automatic, held on tight, and um, I was at 1.3 inches 
for the bulk of these, a couple of outliers, but again, certainly that is less than half the um, width of a, a can of cola. <laughs> you know, or a golf ball or whatever it is, or fruits and vegetables that you may be uh, disintegrating out at, uh, out at your range, but I thought that was very, very good. And when you look at that overall, okay, not bad for a smooth bore barrel flinging BB balls, like old school musket guys, okay? So then I came away from that and I, I said to myself, well, geez, that's pretty good at 10 yards. I wonder how things would do stretched out to 45 feet. And this is this was pretty interesting, okay? So at 45 feet, my best BB, surprisingly, was no longer the Crossman Black Widow, but it moved to the Air Venturi Steel. So there's something about these that are holding um, their pattern better, where they're maybe doing less hooking and looping once you get out at distance. And check that out. I had one, don't know what happened down here, maybe a bad BB, no idea. But um, it put everything in 1.75 inches, 45 feet away, in fully automatic mode, letting it rip. I was shocked when I saw this. Um, so that was very, very inspiring. Again, you're, you're um, two-thirds the width of a cola can. So if you do your, your part, no problem there, guys. Okay, the next best one I kind of felt was the um, <clears throat> that Umarex Steel. All right, out at 45. Um, everything was inside of uh, two inches, a couple outliers here, but uh, two inches center to center and um, impressive. So if you own these already, or if you find that that's the best, um, best value in your area, hook them up because they're gonna be a, a good BB for your gun. All right, um, Crossman Black Widow, the, the BB that did so well at 30 feet, where is it? Uh, you can see the 30 and 45 foot difference. Things really start opening up with all of these, but this just kind of gives you an idea. You're two inches here. Um, but I thought that this kind of had more um, outliers around the group, which is an opportunity for you to miss. Like if you're in semi-automatic mode, or like I said, you're trying to do your training or drills or whatever. And, um, but yeah, overall, very, uh, still very good and uh, very respectable. So, you know, I kind of got that far into it, right? And then I, and I thought to myself, well, dang, if it's doing good at 30 feet and 45 feet, um, maybe, maybe it'll, maybe it'll do, maybe it'll do 20 yards. Maybe it's a 60 foot BB gun. It's not guys. Everything, this is a, this is a, this is a good picture of what 60 feet looks like out of this gun with all of this stuff. All the BBs kind of opened up into about a, maybe a five inch deal. So I don't know if you're shooting bowling pins or you're shooting eight inch steel silhouettes or, or a full silhouette, don't get me wrong, this thing was hilariously fun at 20, 25, 30 yards to just sit out there and just be like, gling, 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 and hear that, hear that steel ringing and it'll do it. But you know, expect those five inch groups, which, hey man, that's center mass. So if you want to use it for a trainer, have at it. It's, it's, you know, it's still a viable tool slash toy if, uh, if that's what you guys want to use it for. All right. Um, we're going to get into the crony data here in a minute, but before I do that, um, I want to, I want to spend some time on the magazine, the speed loader, and loading because there are some pitfalls and lion's dens here that I learned that you guys uh, you guys need to be aware of. So both were excellent. I didn't have any issues at all once I learned what the what the caveats were and the things to stay away from. Once once I figured that out, I didn't have any issues throughout my time with the gun and everything was smooth sailing. Okay. But um, this is the speed loader. It comes with the gun. One magazine comes with the gun. I'm sure you can buy more from 
from Bara. Um, that being said, when I was speaking for, uh, to Bara, if you guys want to know where you can find these now and where you should be able to find them as product starts arriving, this is brand new. Um, I've been told that Pyramid Air, Air Guns of Arizona, and Utah Air Guns are going to be carrying the Bara 400. So look to those three places as sources if, uh, if you want to support the air gun industry. Okay, don't know about airsoft. <laughs> don't know about the BB gun industry, but adult air gun industry, those are the big three that I would send you to because I know they'll do a very good job of taking care of you. These are huge companies. Uh, their customers love them, uh, what have you. Okay, so speed loader, very easy design, all right? Has a little door that opens up, okay? Uh, you dump your BBs in there as high as you want. Um, I never really dumped more than like 50 or 100 BBs in here. I never felt the need to because I was always cycling ammo, trying to figure out what the gun liked. And then you close the door and there's a little plunger up here on the top. And um, there's like a little, it almost looks like a safety for a gun. You can see this. When I squish the plunger, if I throw that safety, um, it holds that plunger in place. I'm guessing that's for transport of this. So when this is in your gun bag or whatever, you don't snap off that plunger because it's, it's poly, guys. And then when I push that safety, you'll see that plunger pop up. Super cool. And now you can be cycling, cycling your BBs. I did find that, you know, this is kind of a little ergonomic deal here. It looks like a little... It looks like a little explosive trigger <laughs> igniter or whatever, but um, but I found that um, that this ta there's a learning curve to making this work right, especially when you get away from these Crossman Black Widows. All right, so you open it up, you fill it full full of BBs, and then what it'll do is um, your BBs will kind of stage in this area, fill up here. There's little marks that tell you how many BBs you have in here. And then there's like this little 45 degree angle shoot that you see here. And at the end of the shoot, there's a, there's a little vertical kind of drop. Okay. <clears throat> now the BB stage in here, they kind of fill up this little angled guy here. And then they fill up this little drop here, right? <clears throat> you kind of got to do, I'm going to close this just so you guys can, yeah. You kind of got to do one of these like shaken plunges as you go i found that it works best to kind of turn it on its side and do little shake and plunges because what's going on guys i think these bbs are they're all like textured like most of them are textured like golf balls and if you can imagine those bbs kind of locking up against each other in here and then the plunger coming down and trying to hit that and and get those to kind of mesh and go down in there they hang up on one another and I found that with everything except the Crossman Black Widows. These guys go in like butter. So, you know, for the kids, if you want it to be fun for the kids, you know, put them on these. This over here is, is going to give some of you guys like brain meltdown because it did me when it got hot out there. Whoa. All right, I got it now. damn impressive but it works fine um, there's a little round receiver here at the top of the um, top of the cartridge there's a little round hole right here you put put the hole in the receiver and you begin to plunge I know all you guys know how to do that right so um, so yeah that's pretty much all there is to it um, this this part on the bottom that the plunger is you know spring loaded you see it coming down where it forces BBs down into here, and I'm gonna load this in a second and show you guys. Um, I, I found it best just to let like three or four or five BBs be in here with each plunge. I don't, that's why I think it was better to kind of have it on its side where I can kind of control three or four or five BBs in there plunge, three or four or five BBs plunge, you know, that kind of thing, instead of this. This, I was getting a lot of lock up in loading this, all right? Um, this little guy at the top here, I wish I had something. I should have brought a little screwdriver out here. But at the top of the magazine, there's a little release here. I'm going to see if I can do it with my finger. Yes, cool, I can do it. There's a little release here. If you pull it back, it'll shoot that plunger back up. Now, this is kind of funny. I learned the hard way. I had a magazine loaded with BBs, and I wanted, and I was like, well, crap, how do I get them out of there? 
without having to fire them out. And they're all compressed in there in the spring. And I pulled back on that little tab and it was like, brrr, it like machine gunned them all right out the top. You know, nothing like scary. It was funny, but it, they just wound up everywhere all over my workbench. But uh, you can deload these by just pulling back on that tab with uh, your, that spring loaded tab with your fingernail. Okay, so let's load a magazine, guys, want to? All right, so here we go, some Crossman Black Widows, because I ain't even fooling with that on camera. Not good for my blood pressure. <laughs> Not gonna put a bunch in there. Okay, so there we go. And you can see they fell right into that 45. They fell right down into that, um, you know, that chute that, that lines up with your magazine here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close this just because it makes it easier. Okay, I'm gonna try one of these right like this so that you guys can see. Whoop, they go in really easy. That whole chute went in, three or four or so fell in there. There they go. Now see, they've kind of stopped falling from the hopper down the chute into the little staging area there, but a little shake, okay? And I can see another three or four have loaded in there. The reason I like just three or four is because when they come up and then they go around the bend, that, that point right there is where this plunger gets hung up on, on the dimple BBs. So if you keep the angled guy kind of not full and just the vertical guy full, they go right in like that. And I thought that was super cool. Now you'll eventually, you can just see them falling in. You'll eventually get to a point here, guys, where there it is, right? I'm almost there, right there. I'm not like jamming on this, right guys? These are poly parts. They're BBs. Now I know that my magazine is, is full, okay? Um, I think it's gonna be one right at the top here, okay? So be mindful of that. One's gonna be sitting at the top. You can put that back in your hopper. By the way, guys, I had BBs all over the place when I was learning this, so expect a mess if you're gonna be out there with the kids. And um, and there's really no way, I don't think, to get the BBs out of here, because it does seem to hold one right at the end there, and, and it's staying there. So there must be a little magnet in here that kind of holds those in place. That being said, there's also a, um, a, some sort of a magnet in the hopper mechanism that holds a BB or two in there. So if I take a loaded magazine and try to jam it up in there when that hopper is full of BBs, there's a little hopper right in there. I'll put a picture up on the screen. If that's full of BBs and this guy has BBs in it, they kind of collide and the magazine doesn't want to go in all the way. So you have to shoot all the BBs out of that hopper before you can put in a fully loaded magazine. If you have an empty magazine, you can jam that up in there with those BB staged in the hopper, but there is a magnet that kind of holds them and, and those, those guys can like sometimes not want to play well together. So, um, so just be mindful of that. the BBs are held in there until you pull back that little tab and they're going to be like, you have like, like a little BB fountain and they're going to be everywhere. So just uh, something to be aware of and learn. This thing holds like a ton of BBs, by the way, I put my old man glasses on 200. So this top line is 200 BBs. That bottom line is, it looks like Looks like 130, 40, 50, 80, 200. I don't know. You guys can see better than I can. When you're 47 years old, your up close vision just goes to shit. I even had LASIK surgery like six months or nine months ago. And I'm 2015 in both eyes from like five feet on out, man. But up close, you just God, you need these readers. Okay. So that's that. This is, this, okay, we're gonna get into crony data now, guys, and this is where the bulk of your $400 goes, in my opinion. Yeah, granted, this thing's ton, uh, chock full of CNC machined aluminum. It's rigid, it's substantial. It does not feel like a toy. Um, you got a lot of accoutrement, nice accoutrement that the gun comes with, but th this is where the magic happens, okay? so. 
that's an 85 shot shot string and um and and, and if i cared to sit out there and do this for a thousand shots which is what a battery will do a thousand plus you know this thing would be like as long as my house here so i think that that's the differentiator i'd like to hear from you co2 guys but i think that this is where the bulk of your money is going right here the reason this flat consistent velocity is so important guys is because that translates directly into accuracy okay if your velocity is the same your point of impact is going to be the same per how you have your sights and your or your red dot or your reflex sight uh, adjusted and um and and that's that's super important because you can hit what you're shooting at and that's what will keep things uh keep things fun right but um but yeah i uh this is the crossman black widow i shot the uh, the I shot the uh, Umrex steels and the Air Venturis through here as well. The Air Venturi steels and, and I got the same velocity. Okay, no matter what I did. So this is a this was with a 5.23 grain Crossman Black Widow, it's 85 shots. I had a high of 392, a low of 379, an average of 386. This is the mind blowing part, okay, guys. An extreme spread of 13 and a standard deviation of 2.3. Guys, those numbers are right there with an out of the box FX, an out of the box day state. Um, you know, two and three thousand dollar adult pre-charged pneumatic regulated air guns. This BB gun is hanging with, and that's huge, huge. And that's what you see translated into the into the accuracy. So as you're firing in fully automatic with the all electric gun, you're not getting a shot chart that that's descending or runs flat and then starts to descend as that CO2 cartridge runs out of gas or gets cold from shooting and because it gets cold it condenses and it can't provide the same air pressure to um to consistently be able to do that time and time again so if you're one of these guys that likes to do your thing do a mag drop stick another one in there do your thing or if you want to be able to go a whole day without changing co2 cartridges guys your ship has come in That is just epic. Average velocity being 386 does fall within their advertised claim. Packaging is really nice, by the way, guys. It says 410 feet per second, but if I remember, the owner's manual said like 380 to 410. So my 386 average is right in there. Isn't that pretty? 1,000 shots per charge. It's 50 rounds in a BB, for up to 410 feet per second. I don't know this tech, so maybe if it wasn't 100 degrees outside like it was when I was filming. We had heat, heat index, this guy's 108 when I was filming this. It was brutal. You know, maybe you'll hit those numbers. You can see how the battery fits in the back there, and, and I'll show you all that. Um, fully automatic fire, full metal construction, all sorts of good stuff. Include speed loader, yada, yada, yada. Love it. <clears throat> okay. So... Don't overlook this, guys. This this is this is this is the jam right here. This is why you're paying the the, uh, the big bucks for that airsoft tech on steroids, which I believe, um, seeing what I've seen now, this is the way forward. I can't imagine if you owned this, ever ever having a reason to wanting to go back and buy CO2. Don't want to knock those companies. They do a great job. There's a place for it. I'm just you know. The job is to be honest, and I'm being honest, just like I was with the select fire switch, right? Okay, so last stop. Oh, 
case you're wondering, owner's manual is excellent, by the way, guys, just really quick. Nice pictures in there, shows you how to load, unload. It, gets, it goes into maintenance. It tells you to clean the barrel if the accuracy goes away. Um, by the way, I should mention, for those of you guys that are particular natured like me, it's pretty darn easy to get to this barrel, all right? So clockwise unscrews the moderator. You're gonna have uh, <clears throat> the barrel just kind of sticking out here. Okay, just like a real AR, um, the takedown pins are here and here. The rear one isn't like a real takedown pin. It just kind of holds in the motor and the gearbox. It's all part of the lower here. So you really don't have to worry about that. You punch out this front takedown pin and this will just kind of lift up and out of here. So take off the moderator, punch out that pin, lift, lift it up and out. Then you're gonna be able to get to the bottom or the back of the barrel and easily remove it for, uh, for cleaning, okay? That's how it was explained to me by Geo the engineer. I haven't done it yet. Um, I'm not gonna do it because I'm so damn busy, honestly. Um, but that's, that, that's, that's what he taught me, okay? Okay, so batteries, guys, don't overlook this part. This is an important piece of all of this. If you've got, if you've made it this far, don't click off and hit stop because this is, this is, there's some, there's some quicksand here for you guys. So I'm an old RC guy. I do uh, uh, RC boats now, the fast electric stuff. The tech is the same. So if you have RC cars, planes, helicopters, if you have airsoft, the tech is exactly the same. You can take the batteries from those disciplines and you can use them in your bar of 400. The gun does not come with a battery. It does not come with a charger. It does not come with a battery tester. Batteries are around 20 bucks. Chargers are around 12. And the battery tester is around five bucks. So make sure you invest in that. I don't feel like anyone here would need to buy multiple batteries because I wasn't able to kill this in all of my testing. And uh, now, um, thousand shots in here. I mean, you're not going to do that in a day. I don't care. You're just not. You may get four or 500 if you spend like an afternoon shooting or a good half a day shooting. I don't see anybody getting to a thousand. So don't go crazy and feel like you got to buy a bunch of these. Um, as I said, this is RC tech. And if you learn the rules, though, if you learn the ways of the lipo, I've got lipos guys that I've been running for five plus years and they're getting amp draws like your Hoover vacuum cleaner would be drawn out of your wall and they're still running strong. So I feel like something like this I could get to last forever. So here's the deal. This is a 3S LiPo, which means there's three cells in it. You can see them. One, two, three. Um, you total up to three, you're about 11.1 volts. And um, this is what powers your gun, all right? The owner's manual says to use at least a 25C battery. What that is, that's a rating of how well the battery discharges when it starts to become depleted. So as this battery runs down, can it still offer full power as it starts to, to deplete its capacity? And that's what that 25C is a, is a measurement of. So you want to use at least a 25C battery. For my RC boats, I'm using 50 and 60C batteries. And all that means is that if the battery runs down and it's got that heavy amp draw on it, it's still able to provide full voltage to the motor so that you, so that you can maintain that consistent velocity and accuracy and rate of fire. By the way, guys, doing the math on this, um, an entire magazine is emptied in less than five seconds. That's a 600 round per minute rate of fire. Oh my God. <laughs> Beep beeps already. So here's the caveat with these guys. A lipo will last forever if you take care of it. What that means, don't store it at full charge and don't store it below about 35%. Don't ever even run this below about 30% because then you're going to start to trash the cells. 
well, how do I know if it gets pulled? You'll hear it. You'll hear the motor. As soon as you hear that motor, just even begin to change its speed or tone, stop. You're done. Okay. Now, a good storage place for this is 3.8 volts, I think is kind of what the LiPo community says. I store my LiPos for my boats, 3.75, 3.7778, kind of in there. Don't go below 3.75, just store them around 3.8 and you'll, uh, th you'll get forever out of this, right? Well, how do I know what the voltage is? Well, you get yourself a $5 voltage meter, all right? Um, the voltage meter will plug, there's two plugs, okay, on a modern LiPo battery. This one is for, um, for providing power to the motor. And um, this one here is a, um, is typically can be two things. It could be charging and it can also be balancing out the cells. I, I'm an RC guy. I have a charger that charges in this one and a separate cable that comes in in this one. But we'll get into that in a minute with the charger. Don't want to get confused you too much. So you'll see little um, exposed metal teeth on this side of the poly tab. And you can't see them on that side of the tab. So you want those exposed teeth up. You take your little guy here, you get over on the left side of it, you line all those up like I'm doing like a blind man without my glasses up close. All right, three cells, all are fine. Total of 12 volts. The first cell is at 4.03, the second cell is at 3.99, and the third cell is at 4.02. And it's gonna keep cycling that. And this is how you'll know how far to run your battery down. Run them down to about 3.8 volts and uh and then and then store it and leave it there until you're ready to go play and um charge it back up and go play don't leave them charged for days and days and days it's okay to do it for a day but you're going to torch the thing if you leave it charged for weeks and uh yeah so best five bucks you ever spent and these are a little bit programmable it comes with a little manual and a little click button up here at the top i'm not going to get into that i'll leave you guys to kind of learn that on your own all right the connector that you need for this gun is called a Dean's connector. If you have RC batteries from other stuff that doesn't have a Dean's connector on it, you can get a little Dean's, you can get little adapters to hook from your battery to this one into the gun. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to load this up in a second. Charger is super, super easy, okay? You plug it into the wall. All of these lights will light up uh, green to let you know that the charger is working. And then when you plug the battery into the charger, okay, you're using this guy here because the charger will charge and balance out the cells. This is a cell balancer, okay? It can only go in one way. You've got little teeth here. When you plug this, the battery into the charger, these lights are gonna go from green to red. That way you know that this is charging and um, and, uh, and as each cell becomes fully charged, that light will go from red back to green. So you'll see them pop kind of one at a time. Takes a while. Uh, you're, you're probably two hours-ish, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, something like that, on a, on a battery that's you know properly down to 3.8 volts. 12 bucks, guys. Again, you can get it at, uh, at Bar Air Guns. All right, so how do I change my battery? Super easy, okay? Butt stock of the gun, there's a release tab right here, there's a release tab right here. Get that, that thing out of the way. I'm gonna pinch those two release tabs. I'm gonna pinch those two release tabs. And I'm gonna pull off the, uh, the butt pad here. It's a really, really heavy poly and my battery flew out, which isn't particularly great for it. But there you go, let's see how that works. Don't be yanking on this, guys. You can break those welds. Ask an old RC guy. Grab the two ends of the tab and pull the pull the tabs apart, right? And there's your battery. And it's literally as easy as you, these Dean's connectors. They have a um, vertical pin and a horizontal pin. You can't get this wrong. You just connect it together like that. Okay. Be you know take care when you're putting this back in here. You can experiment with what works best for you. That kind of worked best for me. Just like a mag. Slap it home and you're good to go. I wonder if I held this. A little bit of battery movement in there. I didn't notice it when I was shooting the gun. I was having so much fun, so. <laughs> Put 
But uh, yeah, holy moly, guys, that's kind of been a lot, huh? Um, so let me just leave you with this. A couple of quick reminders. Uh, Pyramid Air, they're our BB sponsor. Please help me take care of them. That's good for all of us. They send me more guns and BBs, which is in the end good for both me and you guys. AEAC, AEAC 5 coupon code for $5 off, $50 or more when you're buying ammunition and you're going to go through some ammo with this gun. And again, please leave your questions and comments for Jacob and Geo, uh, Moab Ventures owner and engineer in the comments down below and we'll circle back in a month or so and um, we'll do that cool Skype interview where we're talking to those guys and we get all your questions answered by them directly from the factors, factories and makers of this gun. So I would want to say, guys, thank you for watching wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I really appreciate you spending so much time with me. Now from here, you all want to head on over to the Air Gun Nation forum um, so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the BARA 400E. I'll leave you a link on how to get there in the description down below. And special thanks to BARA for sending me their BB gun to test and to Hawk Sport Optics for letting me borrow their wide reflex dot scope and for uh, to uh, Pyramid Air for sending me a crap load of BBs. Guys, I got a lot of BBs I gotta send back to you at <laughs> Pyramid. I didn't use them all, sorry. Um, but uh, thank you. You've all been great and uh, take care guys. Appreciate you watching and uh, enjoy. I think you're really gonna dig this thing. I had a lot of fun with it even as kind of an older guy. Um, make great get make a great gift good time with the kids good time with the buddies uh, just going out there ringing the steel blasting soda cans and watermelons and whatever else you can think of so thank you guys take care and um see you at the next one Technically, it's got lots of holes in it. <laughs>